ride. Happy cow. Hi, my name is Ken Spector with Happy Cow, and we're here today at Whole Foods in Venice, California with Miyoko Shinner. Hi, Miyoko. Hi, Ken. You do so many different things. I'll let you introduce yourself. I have been for a long time a vegan chef and a cookbook writer. I'm also an instructor. I teach in the McDougal program. Mm -hmm. And most recently, I have written a book on making artisan vegan cheese. Artisan vegan cheese. That's fantastic. Now, this is not your first book. No, no. This is my fourth book, technically, fourth but, book. but the first book in like 12 years. So, so, it's been a little, so what inspired you to write this book? Oh, because it needed to be written. Yes. It needed to be written. I mean, we all want that gooey, luscious, indulgent, rich sensation in our mouths every now and then, don't yes. we? Yes, that's right. And so it needed to be written. So So there really are not a lot of vegan cheese books out there. I looked, and there really weren't that many. I took sort of the, the raw foodist's idea of culturing nut cheeses, and then I just took it a few steps further and created a whole range of cheeses from, um, you know, just your everyday sharp cheddar to a gourmet-style brew. Uh, with everything in between. Things that melt, things that stretch, things that brown, as well as things that just sort of melt in your mouth. Before we actually talk about the book, let's talk, you're vegan. You've been vegan for how long? Oh, I don't know. Um, 25 years? 25 years. Long time, yeah. I've yeah. been vegan for about 20. Yeah. And you were a vegetarian before that. What inspired you to go vegetarian? Okay, so I became a vegetarian when I was 12 because I went on a camping trip with some uh, friends. Mm -hmm. And when I came home and my mother put pork chops in front of me, I, for the first time I made that connection and I couldn't eat it. Ew. And I just figured, you know, in a week, I'll probably start eating it again, and I just never looked back. That was it. I stopped cold on turkey, nice. uh, and uh, I never ate meat again, and never craved it, and just Terrific. had no problems. Terrific. Yeah. Now, you went from vegetarian, then you yeah. became vegan. What inspired yeah. you to go that extra leg? Well, I was living in Japan in the 1980s, and I was completely addicted to cheese. I was a cheeseaholic, a dairyholic. Everything I made had to be rich and indulgent and, you know, sort of French in a way. And mm -hmm. then I suddenly realized one day that I probably wasn't doing much good to my body. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to find plant-based alternatives and I started experimenting in my kitchen and came up with this whole vegan cuisine mm -hmm. that's really luscious and right. all of that. I made a sort of a slow transition to veganism and occasionally I would cheat when have a you know slice of pizza or something over the first few years and eventually I just kind of lost my taste for it and and then when I moved back to the United States because there was no support system in Japan and I started learning about the what the dairy industry actually does and some people say oh you know the cows have to be happy to give milk well they don't realize that's not true sure, sure. and when, when I started realizing the impact of that and and um, on the environment as well I there was just no looking back there wasn't any way I could even sneak a piece of cheese pizza again so yeah so you may be the first vegan who I've ever met who owns how many chickens you own chickens don't oh, you I have 11 chickens so they're all rescues they lay eggs and what they what happens eggs. to the eggs um, well my husband's a vegetarian he's not a vegan so he eats the eggs but you know we don't have a rooster so they're never going to be chickens so right. um, and the chickens you know come from factory farms or they were about to be slaughtered or whatever and they're just pets and they run around and they don't lay that many eggs because they're getting older and as they get older they lay fewer and fewer eggs but they're really cute um, <laughs> Do your cats get along with your chickens? My cats do. I have lots of chicken stories. Um, yes, I have one dog that I adopted the same time as this uh, one chicken that was from this horrendous factory farm, and mm -hmm. he ate her foot. Oh. And so this poor chicken was. I brought her inside, and we named her Gloria after Gloria Gaynor. Oh wow! And we kept her in a basket in the kitchen, and she completely recovered and just became this gorgeous chicken. And so, I mean, I've got lots of fun little chicken stories, gotcha. but yeah, cool, cool. yeah, they're so, sweet. So let's get back into your vegan cheese book. I'm familiar with uh, Rejuvelac yeah. as far as making cheese with Rejuvelac. Yes. What is Rejuvelac for those who don't know, and how do you make Rejuvelac? Well, Rejuvelac is a probiotic drink that's really easy to make at home. Um, you need some sort of probiotic, some sort of cultured ingredient to make cheese. And I chose Rejuvelac rather than you know, an expensive bottle of acidophilus because it's something that you can make anywhere in the world if you have access to whole grains. So you, it's basically you sprout the grain and then you soak it in water for a few days. It takes anywhere from four to six days to make. And you get this sort of cloudy, tangy, probiotic filled beverage that you can drink. It's really healthy for you. Or you can use that as a culturing agent to make your cheese and that's what I've chosen to do. Oh, it's so, terrific. Yeah. This was uh, one particular brand of uh, yogurt. I guess the key here is 
unsweetened. Unsweetened and plain. Yeah, what if you were to, by accident, let's say, what if you were to buy this whole soy brand and it were sweetened? Uh, would that make your cheese more like cream cheese? It would make it, a, well, what I would recommend then is that you use it as a starter to make your own batch of yogurt at home. Okay. Uh, otherwise, you're going to get a cheese that's slightly sweet. So it would probably work for cream cheese, mm -hmm. but you probably wouldn't want to make, um, you know, a meltable mozzarella with that. Right, right. Yeah. So mm -hmm. this is one base. Let's, yes. Let's sort of start okay. with, uh, let's start with this. Let's start okay. with yogurt and then we'll go back into the rejuvenate. Okay, okay. So, so as far as the soy yogurt, mm -hmm. what is like the first process someone would do to start with a cheese? Well, so I came up with these cheeses that melt and the cultured product that we start out with is yogurt, which makes it really easy. So even mm -hmm. if you don't want to make rejuvelac or whatever, if you just can get your hands on some unsweetened yogurt, okay. which is already cultured, you've already won half the battle because it already has sort of some of that tangy sharpness to it. Right. So that really contributes to the cheesy quality of what you're about to make. Right. So you use this as the base and then you add some other ingredients, um, including tapioca flour that makes it stretchy and gooey. Yes. and either agar agar or carrageenan which will make it hard and then you can make a variety of cheeses from cheddars to monterey jack buffalo mozzarella yeah. all sorts of things um you know queso for nachos so yeah. i've made i guess you would call it cheese vegan cheese but i used cashews and yeah. i threw in i think i threw in lemon it, yeah. it was tangy but it really didn't have that cheesy flavor, but it, it had that sort of richness that I wanted. What is the big difference between just adding lemon juice to cashews and making a nut cheese and versus right. doing something like this? Well, the difference is that when you add something like lemon juice or citric acid, all you're doing is trying to replicate the tanginess or sharpness of cheese, but you're not really doing it. The only way you can achieve that is by culturing and aging cheese. Mm. And that's what my book is all about, is making cheeses, nut cheeses as well. I've got lots of cashew-based cheeses in there, but they're actually cultured for a few days or aged for sometimes weeks yeah and that's how you get that true sharpness that replicates dairy cheese mm -hmm. okay now mm -hmm. using rejuvelac versus using uh, like a soy yogurt what is the difference in flavor between the two you get a difference in flavor it's really really remarkable so for example there's a fabulous cream cheese in the book that's so easy to make mm -hmm. and that started by using yogurt because you get this nice sweet overtone to it mm. and you don't get that with rejuvelac if I take the same two cups of cashews mm -hmm. and I culture it with this I get a cheese that tastes like cream cheese if I culture it with rejuvelac it tastes like goat cheese oh, so it's really interesting how you end up with different flavors depending on the type of culturing agent you use. So as far as molds and things, we're dealing with fermentation here. I guess there are good molds and bad molds. Yeah. And you can't age cheese. I've, I saw a cheese that was aged for like 20 years. How do you avoid getting the bad mold on your cheese as you're fermenting it? Well, you have to be very, very careful. I read actually a lot of real cheese books, dairy cheese making books to figure out how you actually age cheeses. And so there's certain things that ward off molds such as salt or a brine or alcohol or a fig leaf that's been soaked in wine. There's all kinds of ways that you can treat the outside of the cheese as you air dry them. Then of course the ambient temperature is really important too. And so you want a cooler temperature, not refrigerated, but you know, ideally a wine cave um, would be, or a wine fridge works, 55 degrees or so. That's a perfect temperature for aging your cheese. But wine isn't necessarily vegan. No, no, but you can always buy a vegan you wine. You can buy vegan wine, yes. Yeah, yes. Which is very important. Yes. So, so you have the two sort of different types yeah. of cheese. We had talked before, have you tried fermenting coconut? You know, I haven't. That's a great idea, and that's something I will probably look into. I've been experimenting with um, the juice from sauerkraut. That seems to work a little bit. Um, fermented tofu also is a good culturing agent and kind of makes a stinky type of cheese, which right. is really great. I haven't tried the coconut, but that's a you know that you just gave me some more food for thought. Okay. So I hope that's enough information to get people to want to buy this book. I mean, there's so much information that we're not going to be able to go over here today. You're going to be on a brand new television show. It's called Vegan Mash. Up. Can right. you talk a little bit about that? Yes, it's an exciting new cooking show featuring three regular chefs on every episode, plus guest chefs as well. And the three chefs are Tony Fiore, Terry Hope Romero, and me. Very cool. Yeah. Very and cool. then we've got these exciting guests on it. And then each episode covers some sort of theme, some sort of topic like Mediterranean cooking or cooking for teens. And this is a public television show. So we're asking viewers to call your local public television station and ask for a vegan mashup. Tell them you want to see that. Definitely. Yeah. Is this the first vegan cooking show? No, Totally Vegetarian was vegan. And I think, you know, um, there's that other famous show, Chris, uh, I can't remember her name right now. It's been long for a long time. But this is 
a really, I would say it's a pretty hip show. So there's three different chefs and three different kitchens, and uh, we're sort of cooking the same sort of meal in our own virtual kitchens. So very yeah. cool. How can I go about watching your television show? Well, you have to call your local public television provider, what your public television station, and say we want vegan mashup. Now, I don't know where you are. I know in Northern California. I'm um, in Los Angeles. You're in LA, yep. In Northern California, it's already slated, um, but I don't know about LA. Um, so you have to call and find out. It's just going on to, I guess, satellite feed, and it's available for download to public television stations starting, I believe, this week. Will we be able to watch this online as well? Or? You know, I don't know. I'd have to, yeah. You can go to deliciousTV.com and ask. Oh, okay, mm -hmm. terrific. You've been a vegan for a long time. I have as well. In terms of veganism, do you see a massive upsurge as we do at Happy Cow? Oh, my gosh. When I wrote my first cookbook, which was over 20 years ago, I couldn't even use the word vegan. I had to explain why I wasn't using dairy and eggs. When I first started making vegan cakes and selling them, people would say, why are you doing this? Mm -hmm. You know, what's the point? They just didn't get it at all. So it's wonderful to be in an age where I don't have to explain things anymore to everyone. Yes, so, yes, yes. It seems yeah. like the word vegan has almost replaced the word vegetarian. You don't really even hear the word vegetarian anymore. No, no. no. You go and, to a restaurant and they say, are you vegan? Yeah, you know? yeah it, absolutely. Yes. And the population of veganism or vegetarianism is exploding all over the world. In Brazil, apparently, 9% of the population is vegetarian. Is it 9%? That's vegetarian, not vegan. Not vegan, but vegetarian. The 9% is really yeah, good. It's really high. I was in... Uh, England last year and there were so many vegan options everywhere you'd walk down the street any pub you walked into they'd have a vegan option yeah. it's amazing I want to talk a little bit about your your restaurant you had a now and Zen restaurant up in the San Francisco was it in San Francisco it wasn't. yes well, yeah sure sure I know it's pretty heavy so what happened to the restaurant the restaurant transformed into a manufacturing company and we used to make a product called hip whip and the unturkey and we supply cookies to United Airlines for about 10 years and then I sold it it was just just, you know, I had little kids and um, I was, it was either going to be the company or me having a nervous breakdown. Oh, so that's really what it was. So we okay. sold the company okay. um, and another company bought it and then they went out of business after oh, about four I years. See. So that's what happened. You're thinking of opening up another restaurant, aren't you? I am playing around with the idea. Any uh, details? Well, there's a really, really great location in Northern California. It's near where I live, um, where there's a dearth of vegan restaurants, believe it or not, in Marin. And, um, you know, I would really only do it if I could find the right partners, but it would be a really fun, upscale type of place. My next question is, have you thought of making a vegan cheese company? I am asked Great. that every single day. And so, yes, I am debating it. And I actually just had a conversation with someone about taking that further. I don't know if I want to go into operations anymore, mm -hmm. but there is a, you know, possibly I could partner with with somebody or a company to come up with some really credible vegan cheeses. Yes, yes. Yeah. And I also read something about you possibly creating a vegan French cookbook. Is that tr true? That is something else that I'm working on. Oh, but in cool. the meantime, I have another book that will play off of this idea that mm -hmm. will, you know, take the, the sort of the artisan vegan lifestyle a little bit further. And that's really what I want to show the world is that, you know, you can elevate this there's still an image of hippiedom and i want to just get the word out to the average person that the vegan lifestyle can be not only delicious but absolutely you know in the haute cuisine realm sure. sort of sure yeah what is the most amazing vegan cheese that you've ever had uh the most amazing vegan cheese i have ever had you mean commercially or just i'll, I'll uh, leave that open to you oh gee hmm. You know what's really funny is after years of not being a cheese eater, I kind of lost my taste for cheese. But so, um, gosh, you know, I hate to say it, but I would. I've got a Gruyere fondue in here in my book that's really pretty darn good. Mm. And then there's a brie that's really good as well too. So, you know, I the commercial vegan cheeses are can be quite good and they're great for a quick fix if you're in a hurry and you want to throw together a pizza or something. Um, but what I do like about the nut-based cheeses or the yogurt-based cheeses, whether they're mine or somebody else's, is that they're more whole foods based. Mm -hmm. They're real food. Mm -hmm. And so I try to encourage people to eat less processed food and try to keep the, you know, the processed stuff for special occasions. Yes, yeah. yes. And we also yeah. have these vegan cheeses yes. back here as well yes. if somebody doesn't feel like making their own cheese. You whip it up, you know, you've you got great alternatives, right? That's, that's right, that's yes. right. So you also offer cooking classes, don't you? Yes. And, and how can someone reach you and how can someone find out about your cooking classes? You go to my website, miyoko.com. That's okay. M-I-Y-O-K-O.com. And I usually have my cooking classes on there. I also do classes at VegFest. I'll be doing one today here at the store.
before uh, in Venice, California. So uh, that would be the best way. Terrific. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to seeing you on your brand new television show called Vegan Mashup. That's on public te television. Yes. And we have to get people that are watching this video to request that this television show be shown on their public television station. So please request that show. That would be great. And congratulations on your new Artisan Vegan Cheese book. And uh, look forward to reading your up and coming books, your French cookbook and any other cookbooks you have coming out. Thank you so much. And uh, I look Look forward to seeing the demo later. All right. And uh, this is Miyoko Shinner. I'm Ken with Happy Cow. And uh, thank you very much. Bye bye. The Healthy Eating and Living Guide Happy Cow.